Welcome back to Educator.com. This is Mike Mike Sports, and today's lesson. This lesson will be Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the Life Science course, and today's lesson is on evolution. Our objectives for this lesson will be, number one, how does evolution explain the diversity of species over many generations? Number two, what role does the environment play in the development of species over time? And number three, what is natural selection and why is it the driving force behind uh, Charles Darwin's theory of evolution? Let's start off by talking about what a species really is and how does that in fit into the theory of evolution. So why do some species survive and why do others die? Well, first of all, let's define what a species is. A species is a group of organisms that share similar characteristics and can reproduce among themselves uh, to produce fertile offspring. So they must have similar characteristics. They, they must be able to reproduce uh, viable offspring. Now, evolution, it is a theory that is our best explanation of uh, why uh, certain changes occur um, over the many generations within a species. And we see those changes in inherited characteristics over time. So evolution explains why there are certain variations within a particular species. And variation helps our, the species to survive and to reproduce. Well, why is that? Because variation um, it's caused by genetic and environmental factors, but the more variation you have within a species, uh, the better they're able to adapt to changing environments, and uh, they're better able to adapt to um, situations where uh, there may be a dramatic change in, in the environment, and um, the more variation, the better they're able to adapt to that. So uh, here is just a diagram of evolution. Uh, depicting a wild mustard plant. And this wild mustard plant is similar to like a common ancestor of all of these other different types of plants or vegetables. So uh, this diagram is showing that the wild mustard plant um, was common ancestor to cauliflower and broccoli and cabbage and kale and kohlrabi. And all of these different vegetables or plants are related because of the fact that they came from the wild mustard. And the wild mustard obviously evolved different structures um, that make these particular plants look different for various reasons, probably because of the different climates um, that it encountered. Um, and this is just depicting the different tree of the tree of life, which kind of shows all of these different organisms from a dog to a tree uh, to bacteria, microscopic organisms, and how in some way or another we're all related. All organisms at some point come from one common ancestor. All right, so let's talk about Charles Darwin. Who was he and uh, why is he important when we're discussing evolution? So Charles Darwin uh, studied natural history. He was a scientist and he is known for developing the theory of evolution. Um, he is basically best known for the fact that he, in 1831, he sailed the HMS Beagle to the Galapagos Islands, which are islands off of the uh, mainland which is, of South America. And he's from England. And he went there to study plants and animals. Now, prior to that, he was um, a scientist who used basically plants and animals such as the beetle. He had different collections. And what he did was he tried to find all the different vari var variations of certain plants and animals. And he studied all the different variations of certain species to see how many different variations he could find. So he observed much variation in related or similar species of plants and animals that were geographically isolated from each other. That just means that uh, they were not close to each other. So um, he wanted to see why those variations occurred. 
So um, he went to the Galapagos Islands and he studied several different types of plants and animals. And one of the type of animal that he studied were the finches. They're birds. And um, what he found was that the finches on the Galapagos Islands had a variation that you could see in their beaks. And those finches, um, they were the same species that were found on the mainland of South America, but their beaks were very different. Um, and he saw that there were several different types of beaks or shapes of beaks of uh, finches, and it related to how those finches got their food. So here is a picture of what we call Darwin's finches or the types of finches that he studied. And what he, he noticed was that, you know, for example, certain finches ate seeds, certain finches ate leaves, Certain finches ate buds or fruit. Uh, certain finches ate the grubs or other insects. And basically what he found was that these, all these different finches had different shaped beaks that helped them to acquire the food source that they uh, were used to eating. Um, and so that, you know, definitely caused him to want to study more about why animals of the same species would have different variations or would evolve and adapt different structures uh, to help them to survive. So over time, he studied different organisms and he suggested that a common ancestor um, may have, there may be a common ancestor for, ancestor for different species um, because of evolution. And in 1858, he published uh, Evidence for Evolution and for Natural Selection in a book called On the Origin of Species.